register beans coordinator iqsc heads of the department and staff of uh, st peter's institute of higher education and research and the learned participants from overall all over india i am major dr m vengatramanan dean arts science and management studies it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for this faculty development program for 10 days on innovative knowledge tuning for academicians organized by our departments of art science and management studies at the outset i would like to welcome our madam trustee dr lazia and express our sincere thanks to her for the encouragement and motivation to organize such academic events that that inspired us to organize in a short notice such a mega event for 10 days i also would like to welcome and thank our vice chancellor dr dhanajayan and dr l mageesh kumar registrar of the university for their guidance and the constant support in organizing this ftp it is my duty to thank and welcome all the dedicated heads of the department the team of faculty members of the arts and science department and the iqac coordinator for the cooperation and efforts in conducting this event in a short notice i once again welcome the heads of the department and staff of spyware for the fdp i welcome all the participants from different states of our country for joining us in the fdp finally i welcome our eminent speaker dr r balasubramaniam professor department of isc nmam institute of technology niti karnataka for today's session on digital transformation he is an authority on the subject and i am sure that it will be a thoughtful thought provoking and uh, in a informative session i also welcome the participants that in the days to come we have eminent speakers each who are specialized in their own fields and there will be a brainstorming session and knowledge centric sessions throughout the 10 days i wish all of you the very best stay safe take care thank you jai hind thank you sir uma madam uma madam uh, you can uh, start happy morning to the learned gathering st peter's institute of higher education and research a deemed to be university was established in the year 2008 numerous courses are run under the ambit of the university both in the arts and engineering stream several new courses which are industry aligned are introduced for this academic year on behalf of the management faculty of st peter's institute of higher education and research i extend a cordial welcome to our esteemed speaker of the first day of a 10 days faculty development program sri dr r balasubramani professor nm nm am it nite karnataka to his credit he has more than 50 research papers both of international and national journals and conferences he is a continuous reviewer for more than 10 national and international journals his current responsibilities include Google Cloud and UI Path RPA educator GIT Hub campus advisor Coursera administrator his areas of interest include artificial intelligence machine learning cloud computing robotic process and automotive digital transformation and education technology with focus in OBE such an eminent person is amiss us today the spyer family thanks him for his very concern to be a resource speaker for this fdp we wholeheartedly thank all the participants and the speaker for their kind gesture to be a part of our fdp 10 days fdp i thank dr rani hemamalni iqsc coordinator for inviting him to be our resource person for the day have a good day thank you rinda ma'am Brinda, ma'am. Hello. Can I request our speaker to take his 
Yes, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yes. sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Am I audible? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, You're sir. audible. Yes, sir. yes, sir. My video is also visible, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction. Thank you, sir. And uh, very good morning and a warm welcome to you all for this presentation on digital transformation. I thank the management of uh, St. Peter's Institute for Higher Education and Research, as well as my good friend, Dr. Rani Hemamalli. Most of you, those who are on this call, for, for information, uh, we are the product of uh, ACCAT Karakudi. Uh, I did my B in Electronics and Communication. I think at the same time she did her PBLE. Uh, Thanks, Madam, for the invitation. So, let me share my screen and uh, I will stop my video for the bandwidth, conservation of bandwidth. I hope my screen is visible, right? Yes. Well, sir, you can share your video because you are a speaker now, otherwise uh, it will not be much good there. Uh, uh, then we will uh, stop our video. You share your video. Fine, fine. Okay, fine. Yes. So today we are going to see some digital transformations. Basically, it is a step towards digital India. You can just read my profile from my slide itself. I think I have mentioned some more words. Artificial intelligence and machine learning, GitHub, Google Cloud, VA Path, RPA, Coursera, etc. If time permits, towards the end of the session, we will try to discuss something which is very relevant to the students and faculty. Before that, I want to start the session with a small story. I think most of you have the story also. Well, sir, sorry for the interruption. Kindly make uh, Lata Madam as host. One minute, one minute. Yes, mail, right? Okay. Thank you. Most of you may be aware of uh, Red Bus and some of you could have booked your tickets through Red Bus also. Do you know what the story behind the Red Bus? Yeah. Yeah. The founder of Red Bus, Panendra Sama, he is an IT guy for an IT industry in Hyderabad. During some Deepavali season, an official visit, he happened to come to Bangalore. On the same night, he has to go back to Hyderabad to join his family to celebrate the Deepavali next day. You know, during the festival season, what happens? No, you know that uh, we lot of demand for the tickets. What he did, uh, he personally visited some travel agency, but unfortunately, he was not able to get the tickets. Then what happened? Finally, he has to spend the day in Bangalore itself without joining his family for the poly. See, then he thought, see, you imagine there are n number of travels and every travel is having n number of buses also. At least in any one of the travel, in any one of the bus, at least one seat may go vacant from Bangalore to Hyderabad. It's obvious. Then he thought the same problem many people would have been faced why can't we develop an application for this so that we pull all the information from the transport operators and we present it to the public. It is up to the public to take. I mean, the choice is public. So then came Red Bus. He, along with uh, two of his uh, classmates or friends, he developed the application. It went well. It grew up. Finally, IBGO has acquired this organization for dollar 138 billion. So this is a story. It's an impressive as well as a uh, very enthusiastic story. What we learn from this story? So everything started with a personal problem. When many people face the same problem, it becomes a social problem. The founder of Redbus 
started to find a solution for this problem using digital technology. And he developed the Red Bus application, which is nothing but the digital transformation. Then he also paved way for the digital entrepreneurship. And he keep on enhancing the information, I mean the application. Finally, somebody has acquired. So this is the business model now we are seeing. This is just an example of digital transformation. Day by day, everybody, we are seeing a lot of digital transformation. For example, the platform which we are using itself is a digital transformation. Sometime before, we would not have imagined such a situation. Now everybody is forced to use the digital transformation in one way or the other. Saying this, also you can see that there is something called innovation came into picture. Because of innovation, he was able to develop the application also. So these are some of the key terminologies that I discuss. Let us go through these things in detail, in one by one. So what is innovation? Basically, if you see, innovation is the process and outcome of creating something new, which is also of value. Nowadays, people talk about so much of innovation, but the real innovation even though it is small, it should add value. And innovation is not a single thing or it is not an isolation. It all starts from the opportunity identification. That's what you can see, whatever I'm saying, you can relate it with the story which I told you sometime before, the Red Bus. Because you find an opportunity, you want an opportunity, there's an opportunity in the market. So it starts with opportunity identification, ideation, or invention to development, prototyping, production, marketing, and sales. In a nutshell, if you see, the innovation involves all these processes. When we talk about innovation, you can see whether the innovation is restricted only to a product or a process or anything such, such a thing. It's not like that. When we talk about innovation, innovation is not at all restricted only to the product. Of course, we finally want to see the product, but innovation can be in the process also. Process innovation is coming in the bigger way. See, we have been doing a lot of uh, work, monotonous work. Can we innovate something in this process? So that is a process because uh, when we do the mundane job, a routine job, we will get bored. Then is it, possible is it possible to bring some innovation to the process? That's a process. Because of that one, it opens a new market. And also there is a new ways of organizing the business also. Lot of business models, which we have not imagined is coming up day by day and new sources of supply. So we can see it is not restricted only to product, but these are all some of the byproducts of the innovation. Yes, can we say which is the single most significant innovation of our time? Naturally, it is nothing but the World Wide Web Internet. So you can see that Tim Berners-Lee was born in 8th June 1955. He was in, born in London, England. He was an engineer and computer scientist and MIT professor the very world famous Massachusetts Institute of Technology in US, he invented the World Wide Web. Because of this invention, we are able to sustain this COVID-19 situation. I think most of you will believe. Otherwise, no, where is the communication, how to communicate, so many issues. So this is, and this paid, it completely changed the evolution. It brought a kind of revolution to the people, to the industry also. Yes, if you see, what is the difference between innovation or what is the difference between a leader and follower? A leader always finds a new ways of doing, innovative ways of doing the things. So that is the innovation that distinguishes between a leader and follower. You can see the Apple Steve Jobs statement. So everybody wants to become a leader. But if you want to become a leader, you need to do something new. You need to innovate, even though it is a very small I think also, but if it is adds value to the system, definitely it is an innovation only. So that is what uh, you can see here. Why people innovate? What are the drivers behind this innovation? Maybe these are some of the reasons, you can add some more reasons also. Definitely, now actually if you see, you can see in the current situation, there is a lot of job loss, 
and pay cut and i think it, uh, so i can say, say uh, I, I saw the newspaper that at least 80 percent of jobs have been vanished because of this situation then if you want to sustain you have to innovate you have to prove yourself how to do it so if you see this financial pressures to reduce the cost naturally because day by day costs are increasing but if you want to uh, because to, uh, to sustain the financial pressure you have to go for the innovation increased competition so very important thing say for example uh, there are a lot of players in the marketing uh, where this increased competition if i offer a product for five rupees somebody is ready to offer the same product for four rupees then what to do how to sustain the market so increased competition you have to come out with some innovative ideas industry and community needs for sustainable development demographic social and market changes markets keep on changing and we have to cope up with the market rising customer expectations regarding service and quality nowadays the thing is we have to retain our existing customers in any business as well as we have to get new customers so both are very challenging in this competitive world unless and otherwise we are innovative we may not be able to do that one and changing economy changing policy and greater availability of potentially useful technologies so data is very cheap in india compared to us you can agree with me so the, the data internet the hardware software nowadays we can see everything is free now most of the things in this covid 19 has pushed the market to the such an extent that everything is available free of cost i think knowledge i'm not talking about other things but knowledge is free of cost nowadays so everybody is using the technology to the extent possible to survive in this field so these are some of the drivers for innovation when we talk about the example of red bus we can observe one thing called disruption or disruptive technology this is an again a lot of buzzwords will be using uh, throughout this course or throughout this presentation what is called disruption or disruptive technology what do you mean by disruption whether it's a positive or negative generally disruption we say it's negative but as far as disruptive technology is considered it is a positive the thing is we are breaking the traditional way of doing our business we are doing something new because of that one lot of benefits also there for example you can see these are some of the characteristics of disruptive technology playing the game differently yes it creates a new market easily you can scale for example as you can i don't i need not say amazon flipkart so how they are making the business how they are able to scale without any physical store to store their thing they are able to scale their business because of the technology so creates a new market transforms or destroys yes, naturally for example because of the various applications the existing market will go people going to the local markets or uh, physically going and purchasing all these things have come down we can see everything they are booking through online only in a way it is good but in a way we have to keep our limit or balance so it transforms or destroys the current market and because of this disruptive technology it adds more value to the market for example doing the business is very simple and it is more affordable because the people know their rates or competitive prices which is offered by the our competitive markets so that they keep on decreasing the prices to keep to keep the market live so it's more affordable but finally the customers or the clients or the end users are benefited to this and more accessible customizable nowadays everything is customized customized so according to my need is early days you can see that markets used to push the products to the customers whether you like it or not you have you are forced to buy that one nowadays everything is customized even you can see that the masks is also customized according to your wish or according to your interest you can customize or redesign your masks so that is called customizable and also it drives the growth you can see some of the uh, images on the right side so these are the various uh, new disruptive technology in the market so before going this you can see here whether technology is going to advance yes it keeps on going this keeps on advancing and nobody can stop it and what is the solution we need to transform 
So we need to adopt the digital technology to the extent possible. For example, you can see this is a data. The data shows how the paper, newspaper, US newspaper, maybe the data may be from 2003 to 2013 and it still holds good, the current situation also. Year by year, you can see the newspaper printing has came down and digital media has increased. You can see that one. Also, you can see here that nowadays nobody is preferring the physical or advertisements. Everybody is going for the digital advertisements. Day by day, you can see the digital advertisements is also keep on growing. You can see the Google ads. You can see one example. So these are some of the examples of digital transformation or where the industry is adopting quickly. If you adopt something very quick, then you will be the winner because uh, you are always ahead of your competitors. It's an important thing. So it also creates a new industry. Um, something I shared on the screen, how many of you are able to recognize these items? Any? Uh, those who are in 40s and 50s, they would have seen some of these items, but for the students, I don't think uh, most of the items they would not have seen also. Anyhow, let me list out these items. And here I would like to share my personal experience also. So first one is, you know that it's an audio cassette and the normal Walkman, that uh, Sony player, digital, uh, digital video player and another uh, speaker. And this is the central one is nothing but the, it's a floppy disk. It's actually the size of the floppy disk. Those who are in the IT field, uh, you may be knowing that one. The size, I mean, physical dimension of this floppy disk is 3.5 centimeter, it holds 1.44 MB of data, megabytes of data. There are another floppy disks also there during those days. So similarly, you can see some retail stores, uh, the famous camera, Kodak, and the film, and that the boy, I mean, kids used to play the Game Boy. So if you see, most of these things have, not way most, everything has vanished. You cannot see anything now. So here I would like to share my personal experience with you. I started my career as a service engineer. I graduated in 1990. I started my career as a service engineer in a company called Analog and Digital Systems in Bangalore. They were manufacturing a product called PCU, Public Call Office Monitor. What is a PCU? During 90s, there were no mobile phones like what we are using now. There were something called STD booth. Well, for example, every street will have at least one or two STD booth. If you want to make a call, you have to go to the booth. Already a long queue will be waiting before you. So you have to make a call. And once you finish your call, you will get a slip and you will pay and come. So the thing is, you have to wait for a long time. So that machine, PCO, Personal Call Office Monitor, PCOM, that was manufactured by the Analog and Digital Systems Company. It was monopoly. So it was sold throughout India. At the time, again, you can see there are three types of exchanges existed in 90s. What is called Stroger Exchange. I think some of you have seen some telephone. If you dial some zero, the sound will be there. So there will be some 10 pulses. If you dial nine, there will be nine pulses. So these are these the things are links are connected to Stroger Exchange. In the Stroger Exchange, when you dial zero, 10 pulses will generate, it will lock the zero. Similarly, everything will happen, you will get a connection. Make, ma majority of these storage exchanges, if you see the components are mechanical components, you know the use of mechanical components. After some time, there will be some error. Because of that one, what happened, no? That the exchanges were receiving a lot of complaints from the customers. Some wrong metering, meter jumping, all these complaints. So they were not able to uh, trace the complaints. What they did know, actually our company were manufacturing another equipment called MLOE, multi-line observation equipment, all are microprocessor based products only. And these were installed in all the telephone exchanges throughout India. Whenever yes, a customer is complaining about his meter jumping or a wrong meeting or something like that, we will log the customer into the MLOE it can record all the incoming and outgoing calls made by those customers. Very tedious job. You can connect only 24 customers or clients to a single machine. So like that it happened. Then there was cross port exchanges, then telephone, I mean electronic exchanges. Now you can see almost everything is electronic. 
just by clicking on a button, you are able to make a call. How much? This itself is an example of digital transformation, which we have seen in the past. So these products, whatever you are seeing in the screen, have been removed or vanished, and all are replaced by something new like this. Yes, you can see that uh, smart mobiles, smart watches, and smart video games, and YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Web Services, Uber, all these things. I think uh, digital transformation is one thing and enhancing that one is also another thing and we keep on innovation. For example, nowadays, I think you would have seen in the uh, newspapers also, nowadays the films are released directly on OTT. OTT means you may be knowing that OTT stands for over the top. In future, I am not sure the pictures or films may not go to theaters. Directly, it will go to OTT like Netflix, Amazon Prime, or anything, a Disney Hotstar, so like that. So you can see these are the some of the examples we ourselves witnessed now, the changes. So these are the examples. So the new business model has arrived. When I talk about the Red Bus, what was the investment? Very, very less investment. And you see one thing. Huh? When we talk about the red bus, red bus is pulling the information from various travels and it is presenting to the user. Whether red bus is having their own bus? No, they are not having any their own bus. Similarly, you can see some of the major players in the field, Uber, the world's largest taxi operator, but they don't have any taxi in their name. Facebook, world's largest content provider, but they are not creating any content on their own. They are just collating the information from various people and they are producing. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, background or analytics has happening. Let me share that one also. And Alibaba, so the world popular or most preferred retail store. They don't have any store, I mean the physical store in their own. Similarly, Airbnb, world largest accommodation provider. They have no real estate. If you see here, what is this new business model? You need not invest anything. You need not own anything. Only you should know how to play with others. For example, if you are good in technology or good in programming, you are able to develop a good app, then definitely you become a billionaire. That is what, because you are not investing the money. Maybe if you want to start an entrepreneur in digital technology, almost what you need, maybe a PC with a good configuration, a software hardware, that's all. Then if you are good talented, you can make, you can be the leader also. So here, if you see the Facebook, one particular thing, uh, sometime before there was some challenge given by the Facebook, 10 year challenge. I think most of you who are uh, constantly watching the Facebook have seen that one. Basically the idea is you have to give your photo to Facebook, that is uh, 10 years before or 20 years before kind of thing. They used to collect all the information and finally, they will tell you after 10 years or after two years, 20 years, how your face will be. So what is this? How it is happening? How it is possible? So basically, if you see when Facebook is collecting all the data from the users, it is subject to something called artificial intelligence and machine learning, deep learning. So because of that one, the system is able to generate the pictures of Yours. That means after 10 years or 20 years. So we can we we are very happy when when it, the announcement came from the Facebook. We just uh, given our photos and we want to see ourselves after 10 years or 20 years how the our face should be. But uh, in the background, lot of data collection happened, analytics happened. They come out with their model and they can sell that model to course and course of rupees. This is one example I am telling. So similarly, you are having similar many examples. So this is the new business model. The thing is, you are developing a business without any investment. Only the investment is your knowledge and you can make money. That is possible only in case of digital technology. For example, other fields, I'm not sure because some little bit of investment is physical investment, physical infrastructure is much essential in other cases, but not required in the case of digital technology. Yes, you can see the major success stories. So when we talk about the top giants across the world, naturally you'll have Google, Apple, 
Microsoft, so many things, right? So why the Google is famous? Now everything is uh, connected to Google. See, Google is one of my favorite also because when we try to explore the possibilities with Google, it's endless, it's infinite. So much of applications, so much of integration. I think now we are hosting through Zoom, but actually Google is also has something called Google Meet is also there. And now they made it very free. If you have the Gmail account, automatically you can use that uh, uh, Meet application also. So you can see some, some of the very popular products of Google, very innovative applications, search engine, Chrome browser, maps, at least everybody in the world, at least they might be using at least one application from Google. Not, may, may not be everything. So everybody is using maps nowadays, right? So analytics, AdWords. So this was the some of the asset of Google, we can say, market cap worth dollar five fifty billion. Maybe this may be the world data. And they are going day by day. Similarly, there are a lot of inventions from the Apple also. You can see the iPod, iPhone, iPad, all those things. So if you see that Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, these are some of the top players. And the problem here is one, one example, they are, we cannot say that they are just lamb because there is also a lot of competition. Say one example I can say, if you say, talk about cloud computing, we know what is called cloud computing. Most of the IT guys may be knowing about what is called cloud computing. Now what is, everything is happening only in the cloud. It is not happening in our local system or somewhere else, but it's happening in the cloud. Cloud is nothing but a group of servers. Most of you may be knowing. So there is a lot of competition. You know that the world player, the first the top host player in the uh, cloud computing is AWS, naturally, because they started very early and they were able to get to so much of market or so much of customers into their fold. So that is the number one. Second one is Alibaba Cloud. Third one is Google. So Google, as far as cloud is concerned, it is stands third. Then actually we are having the IBM cloud, Oracle cloud, so many cloud companies are there. So uh, these companies are trying to give a lot of futures to the clients. Nowadays the companies are not at all depending upon only one cloud for information. They are going for the hybrid cloud or multi-cloud. That means if I'm owning an organization, I will have the account in Google cloud also. I'll be having some account in AWS also or IBM also because the switching from the cloud to cloud or transferring the applications across the clouds is very easy. And because of this one, lot of new futures, particularly in the areas of machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, the more and more futures are added to all these cloud products to retain the customers. So that is happening. So because of that one, these, these companies are very popular, you can say. Yes, these are the some of the companies to watch. As I already told, Airbnb is nothing but the world largest accommodation provider. Tesla, autonomous car, you can see. It's autonomous car. I can give some explanation on those things. So you can see that Bitcoin, blockchain technology, Snapchat. So what I'm saying here is whatever you have seen earlier, everything has been transformed to new form or new technology and we have to fast adopt it as fast as possible. So what we can say, emerging technologies will change everything naturally, how we work, how we live, how we communicate. Earlier, uh, I think uh, these are some of the, on the lighter side, uh, some of the things came in the WhatsApp also. For example, sometime before we say that uh, Mobile phones are not allowed in the educational institutions. Nowadays, you can see that uh, educational institutions are living inside the mobile only. Correct? So, this is some changes. So, emerging technologies will keep on changing. It also will change how we work, how we live, how we communicate. This is very apt in this present scenario. Everything changed. The way we work, most of us are working from home, but uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, I'm working from the college. In uh, our area, they are open because of the uh, there's no restrictions or no more cases. This is basically, I am from the place called Nipte in Udupi district in Karnataka. So for the last two weeks, we are working only for the faculty, not for the students. Okay. So 
most of us are working from home now we are living in a contained environment and the way we are communicating no physical communication or something like that and everything is through the application only so everything is changed how will consumer behavior will evolve so the thing is it is going to change definitely in the future also and uh, many questions will arise here sir if everything becomes automation now we talk much about the automation automation is the key we cannot stop it one particular thing is called robotic process automation the process the mundane or monotonous job which are done by the human beings will be replaced by the software robots you know already about the hardware robots there is something called software robots that will be replaced so whether it is going to take away the job market from the existing people definitely it is not that's the reason the people are asked to skill or reskill or upskill their talent i mean their skill talent then only they will be able to survive so you can see that last statement of some organizations will fail some will thrive and all will have to evolve so evolution is ultimate thing we have to do it we have to evolve if it is possible only if you adopt to the digital technologies so i have just given you some brief introduction about the importance of digital transformation or digital technology in a nutshell now we are going to see some of the trends in 2020 here something not more technical but uh, every common man will be using in this this technologies in one form or the other so let us see what are these things here so first thing is internet of things iot most of you may be knowing about iot from the picture itself you can see what is the why what is what, can you give an example for iot yes naturally say most of us uh, when we go out no so after going uh, some 2 uh, 3 km suppose we are going for uh, some uh, other city or other place or something after going some 2 3 km something will come to our mind whether i pro properly locked my door or whether i switched off the gas or whether i switched off my refrigerator these are the common uh, i mean uh, uh, thoughts correct doubts we used to get it all these problems will be solved if you use this technology called iot so iot is nothing but a small chip connected with every gadgets or every instruments or every machines in your house maybe you can connect that one to your washing machine your gas stove your refrigerator everything so through mobile you can control all these things this is one example but let of n number of examples are available for i mean the practical applications are there for iot internet of things so when this is done so after three if you travel then from your mobile itself you can control your household appliances iot is playing a huge role in the day to day life for example it is very much applicable for agriculture see as i already told you when you want to do something or when you want to define or develop an application the application will be useful only if it is useful for the society so the, it may be a personal problem or you may be trying to solve the societal problem so the lot of how the iot is using in the agriculture so iot sensors are kept in the agriculture fields they try to collect a lot of data maybe about the climate soil the temperature all this information can be collected through this iot sensors it can be properly analyzed it can give some predictions to the farmers for example you can see that iot used in the farmers because they can recommend the farmers what kind of cultivation they can go for so you can say that uh, uh, farmers will be having their already existing experience so it is not going to cut that one but it can recommend based on the climate based on the soil type or based on the tire temperature it can analyze all the information and it can tell to if it can recommend the crop cultivation this is one example so many things are there you can say in the health care as well as in the retail industry everywhere it kind of things are used this is the first thing okay. drones now everybody is doing uh, seeing the drones daily we are seeing in the tv also particularly in tamil channel if you see that uh, 
police department using drones effectively to see people whether they came out. I think they have identified okay. some children playing in the fields. And uh, once they see the drones, no, then they just uh, they are run, uh, they are running and they're hiding themselves. And drones, are, that is not only the thing, not only the use. Say for example, drones are in US, so the drones are used to deliver the items to your doorstep. You need not go. See, initially what happened? No, so if you cook in Amazon, some person from Amazon will come and deliver the products. But using drones, they are using drones to deliver the products. Some other, uh, some Indian people also tried this one. They caught. Okay. So, but actually that is another thing. And drones are having immense applications also. You can see it can be the drone ambulance. So the places where the normal vehicle cannot go, the drones can go and they can save humans, humans, uh, I mean lives, humans lives. So it is uh, in the construction site also. It is very much applicable in the defense and in agriculture. Because uh, one thing is you can see that uh, the pesticides and fertilizers are very poisonous. Okay, if it is, uh, if the uh, human being, uh, I think they spray the fertilizers, it may be dangerous to the health. So you can use drones to spray the fertilizers, pesticides also. So these are some of the examples uh, where the drones are very much used. There are a number of examples, but what I'm saying is just I'm giving you the overview of various technologies available in the market. Virtual reality, VR, and also we call as AR, augmented reality. So you can see that what is actually, there are a lot of practical examples. Our example, I will say. So during this lockdown period, what happened? No, the pilots were in their home because flights, all flights have been cancelled. So you suppose uh, the pilot uh, lose his uh, driving, I mean, that, that practice for more than two months, naturally it is an hazardous, right? Because uh, he has to constantly keep his practice. The pilots in the home were using the augmented reality and virtual reality tools and techniques to practice the piloting. One example. So when we talk about the virtual reality, we started with one dimension, right? We started with one dimension, then two dimension, three dimension, six dimension, nine dimension. If you go to some of the malls, they are giving the experience of a 16 dimensions also. Not only the physical movement, you can you can just experience the theater. You can fragrance, you can experience, you can experience the movement. So all these things are possible and become reality because of virtual reality, also called augmented reality. This is one example. Very important thing: the buzzword artificial intelligence and robotics. Uh, on the other day, I mean, last Friday, I also attended uh, the session by Mr. Sassi, I believe, right? He was talking about the machine learning and deep learning and also about artificial intelligence. So the people, those who are in the, already in this field, they may be knowing much about this artificial intelligence and robotics, but just I want to give an idea what is it actually it means and what's the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. One example we will see. Artificial intelligence is a broader area. It covers machine learning as well as deep learning. Even a part of data science is also covered in this artificial intelligence. What the human being we have is the natural intelligence. We want to imitate, I mean, we want to give the same kind of knowledge to the machines or the computers. Then it becomes artificial intelligence. The other part of artificial intelligence, whatever I have discussed now is also, we can say computer vision natural language processing so these are some of the some areas are uh, the broader areas of artificial intelligence when you talk about machine learning you can see i i hope that uh, most of you may be familiar with some of the programs maybe c program or c plus plus or java whatever it may be generally when we in the case of traditional programming what we used to do we used to give some input to the computer along with some algorithm and the computer will generate the output. That's a traditional way of programming. But in the case of machine learning, we just tell this is the input and we tell the computer this is the output I want. Let the computer generate their own algorithms. So that the, the only thing is we are giving the input. We are saying the computer this is the expected output and we are let the computer to generate their own algorithms. 
This is called machine learning. This is the difference between machine learning and natural, I mean, normal traditional programming. Then you can ask me, what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? One example I will say, for example, you are having the image of a cat. So you want to train the machine so that whenever you are showing the image of a cat to the machine, it should identify that this is an image of a cat. There are two ways of it. In the machine learning, what you are doing, you are not only giving the image of the cat to the machine, but also you are telling the futures of the cat. The computer memorizes or understands the future of the cat. And next time, whenever you are showing another cat, it will compare the futures. And if it is matches, then it will say it is the cat. Right. That is machine learning. That means you are also giving the futures also. I am talking in the layman thing because a lot of other technical aspects are also there, like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforced learning, all those things. But this is an example. You are giving an image of cat to the computer along with its futures, and it understands the futures, and it understands if the, these futures exist, then this is the cat. Whenever next time, whenever you are showing, then it will identify this is a cat or not. This is machine learning. What about deep learning? It is a subpart of machine learning. Here, we are allowing the computers to understand the futures also. You are not telling the futures to the computers. You are just showing some 10, 15 pictures of the cat to the computer. This is a cat. This is also a cat. This position, it has stand back, it is stand front. These are different kind of cats. So you are giving more and more images to the computer. And by seeing all these images, computer learns itself. These are the futures of the cat. So here the thing is, the extent to, to which you are giving more and more images to the computer, to the extent the computer will learn better. That's the reason we are, in the case of machine learning terminology, we are giving more and more samples to try in the model. So once you give all the, once you say the computer, these are all cats, it understands the futures of the cat. Next time when you show some other cat, it will easily identify whether it's a cat or not, depending upon the case. This is the difference between the machine learning and deep learning. This is a buzz, buzz word today. Everybody in one way or the other using this artificial intelligence or machine learning or deep learning in our day-to-day -day life. Because of this one artificial intelligence, they are able to detect the clusters of uh, COVID. They have applied the artificial intelligence knowledge to decide this particular area is, pro, is vulnerable. So we have to contain it. So all these, uh, the government are using on the applications based on this artificial intelligence and machine learning. Next, we're coming to the robotics. When we talk, when you can see that it's a uh, physical robot because it's having the mechanical parts and electronic parts, all those things. So robots are, you know that everywhere we are using robots. And uh, you can see that in Chennai, I think most of you may be from Chennai, some restaurant is applying using the robot for to serve the food. So I think uh, I don't think uh, during this COVID-19 situation uh, that uh, social distancing, all these things may not affect uh, that particular kind of uh, uh, restaurants. I, maybe. So robots are used in the surgery, robotic surgery. The precision with which the robots are doing is exemplary. So it's unmatched. That's what people used to say. So this is all about the physical robot. I want to talk something about the robotic process automation here. I think uh, most of you may be knowing about the robotic process automation. What is the robotic process automation? This is because why I'm saying all these examples, these are the upcoming field in the case of uh, digital technology. And if you want to master, you can master, you can select any one particular field, you can explore more and more information, you can try to beat it. As far as uh, this uh, robotic process automation is very simple. Say for example, one, one example I can give you, I think most of you are using the search engine, right? Maybe Chrome or something. If you want to search some books, what you used to do? You would just type something on the search bar, you will get all the information. And you can see that there may be hundreds of books because it is a span over different pages. There may be hundreds of books maybe there. And you can see, but is it possible to extract the information from the pages into the Excel sheet so that later, whenever I want, can I refer that one? 
It's a curious job because every time you cannot copy paste. For example, it, it follows, when you see the book pages, it follows a pattern. Maybe the book title may be there. Then you may be having the author, the price, like that. Similarly, another book will have the title, author, price. So like that, it continues. So if you want to copy paste everything, it's a very tedious job. Here comes the role of robotic process automation. What I'm saying is one example. The robotic process automation is nothing but a program only. It will automatically do or extract information from all these pages into the Excel sheet. That means the monotonous job is replaced by a another process. This is called robotic process automation. There are world players, for example, Automation Anywhere. It was a, no, it is one of the major player in the robotic process automation. But now the UI path has taken over that one. So this is also a very hot field. So if some of you are interested, you can uh, I will share that one in the days uh, in the uh, towards the end of the session. How we can further explore the things you can uh, see about uh, the UI path academy also. So these two things: artificial intelligence and robotics. Okay, smart city. Yes, we are having a lot of uh, smart city projects. We used to say we are having the smart city, smart watches, uh, smart mo mobiles. So everything is become smart except the human beings. We used to say just on the lighter side because when we give the smartness to everything, ultimately sometimes we may lose our smartness also. So this is another project you can see. So where everything is connected to IoT or other devices. And it's a smart city. SMAC is hot. So you can see that uh, when we talk about SMAC, social media, mobility, analytics, and cloud. Here you can see that uh, talk about the, this is very uh, top field. I mean, um, this is, uh, these are some of the areas where you can show your interest. Social media, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So most of the advertisements now happen, digital marketing, we talk about it. It's happening through the social media only. It is through the social media you are getting the popularity. Say for example, I came to understand that for this particular webinar, once they posted, within an hour, it got filled. All 500 registrations got filled. How it happened? It happened because of the popularity. One is popularity, second one is the reach. How can you reach the masses? It is possible only through the social media. I strongly believe that digital marketing and mobility. Yes, you are a 24 or 7. We are all connected with the mobiles and analytics, data science, data analytics is also important thing. See, we are having on the other day also, I think uh, most of you would have attended that one also. That speaker was talking about three types of data, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data. In reality, you can see that 80% of data that is existing in the world are unstructured. Only 10% is structured and 10% is semi-structured. 80% of data is unstructured. That means you are not able to get useful information out of this unstructured data. You have to transform it. That's what he was telling about ETL, extract, transform, load, analyze. And finally, you are coming out with some kind of intelligence out of it. That's called data analytics. You can see data scientists are the highest paid job in US. So the market is very high. So everybody in a way, uh, they are using this analytics in their own organization. So cloud. Here I want to say oh, something on the new education policy because since I am coming from the education background, most of the professors are there. Maybe in the new education policy, they have given, they listed some nine trust areas, starting with artificial intelligence, machine learning, 3D printing, cloud computing, and uh, blockchain technology that means that thing is very simple in future if somebody is going to start an engineering college they cannot start the college with the traditional branches like civil mechanical electrical electronics computer science or something like that they should start a branch in only only these in only in these nine areas the trusted areas so a lot of market is there so actually in india if you see the job market has transformed the old market, what we see some 10 years before, 20 years before, it's not there today. Job market has changed. 
so we have to adapt to that it is only possible if you learn one or the other kind of the digital technology that's what the, that, that is the point i want to emphasize here and spot transportation yes that is another part of uh, the digital technology or digital transformation is a spot transportation okay uh, basically it is the end of my slide you can see that actually you can go through some of the books which i have mentioned here and here i want to touch upon some of the information which i have shown in my slide i think my contact information most of you are maybe educators i believe and uh, now as i already told you more and more companies are offering some free courses for example you talk about the google cloud as i already told you google cloud is offering the cloud administration i mean associate cloud engineer track to the students free of cost that means they are offering some five courses in coursera i think uh, you may be knowing about coursera also i will talk about that one also so coursera is the world famous e learning platform so lot of content is available in coursera world renowned professors have delivered their lectures in the coursera so for google cloud is offering five i think uh, five courses in coursera and they are also offering some hands on for in the class then the students once you clear all these things they can take up associate cloud engineer track we are preparing our students for the next era or industry 4.0 so it is one of the thing so that is what the people can uh, i think most of the colleges would have signed with the google cloud and uh, if it's not there you can reach out with the google cloud and they can assist you that is one part second part is ui path ui path as i already told you the rpa stands for robotic process automation again you can if you are interested you can make alliance with ui path to offer the rpa robotic process automation course in your campus again uh, they are preparing the students for the associate i mean sorry they prepare students for the ui part certified professional here one thing in case of google cloud if a students are appearing for the google cloud associate cloud engineer track they are charging 50% i mean it comes around some 3500 but for the faculty it is free of cost the faculty can learn they can appear for this examination free of cost and they can earn the certificate also most coveted certified certification from the google and i'm talking about ui path and again coursera during this covid 19 i think most of you were assigned with coursera also i think so they are offering free courses to the students as well as for the faculty for example if you take in our college nearly some 1700 students are benefited through this coursera they have joined the coursera courses and at least some 50% of the students have already completed the courses so apart from the regular teaching you are already the students and faculty will be engaging the students and i mean the students to the online classes apart from that they can try this one also it's very much uh, useful and uh, this is what uh, i want to share with you and uh, i think uh, is a time i'm not able to see this so thank you sir actually two questions were raised sir Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, one more for. Sir, could you please uh, elaborate on the progression of uh, progression of digital from 1990 to 2030? This was the first question raised by Dr. Rajshreeder. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, once again, repeat the question, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Could you please, uh, could you please elaborate on the progression of digital from 1990 to 2030? Okay, that I think uh, I am not again able to share the slide because of, okay. Anyhow, just I will throw the light. The slide shows that the impact of the digital technology. What the slide I have shown here is how the print media, physical print media, has shrunk and digital media has elaborated. That is what I have shown in that part. Because year by year, you can see that the physical print media is becoming dumb, and the digital media is becoming more. So it means more and more people. I mean, new paper, newspapers, and news articles are printed in the digital media more than the physical media. 
actually it is a really a good thing because we are conserving the paper we are uh, avoiding the printing cost so much of money is saved so that's the reason year by year until 2013 if you can see that uh, the print media i mean the digital print media has increased maybe the recently i think you can say that nearly some 80 percent we are having the digital print media i think uh, i hope i answered the question right so the second question uh, the next big digital transformation in education is automation what will be the impact of this Today, I think uh, I have answered this question. Automation is going to impact a lot. And uh, there is uh, one thing I want to tell you. There is the UI path is having one principle. Every student uh, should build at least one bot. What means robot? That is the thing. That is automation. Say, for example, it is not in uh, what I can say in uh, rocket science, something like that. Very, very simple. If you see the robotic process automation, by offered by UA path or RPA, just you have to drag and drop the information to your screen. You have to put it in a particular sequence. Automatically, it will execute. Your daily routine can be made very easy. When, actually, I was very much interested in particular things. Say, for example, daily morning, whenever I come here, my first job is to go to Facebook. I'm making as a habit. Okay, I'll just open the Facebook. I'll go to events. I'll go to birthdays. And uh, the contacts, those who are having birthdays today, I used to wish happy birthday. Sometimes the list may be five, may, sometimes it may be 10 or 15, something like that. If it is 100, difficult. But you can make a kind of automation where automatically your robo, I mean the software robo will work on behalf of you. It will identify all your contacts, those who are having birthday today. It will send the greeting message. At the same time, you will get some feedback. During your leisure time, you can see because birthday wishes when it goes in the morning, it has some effect and if it goes in the evening, okay, or the night, the fellow has forget me, something like that. So maybe the I can say my robot to work on behalf of me. I can do some productive work. And evening I can go through the people, those who are having birthday. So this is one example. So another thing I want to tell you is the robotic process automation, automation is not going to take away the jobs. Only thing what is required, we have to reskill or upskill the existing workforce in that particular area. People are not aware of that, but that's the reason. That's the reason. So we can we can give some awareness to the people so that they can get some more information about that one. Even yeah, I think uh, nowadays in the schools itself for that C, C plus plus Java and Python is also coming out in there. Not a skip. Compared to that programming, there is no programming is required in the case of robotic process automation only the knowledge only the sequence that's enough uh, yeah i think i've given an elaborate answer is it okay yes sir, another one question yes sir. how can we develop our innovative minds as an academicians yes how can we okay. develop our innovative minds as academicians okay um, so whatever i shared actually what i'm doing in my college that only i shared with you the thing is, we have to keep ourselves open. We have, we have to explore the possibilities. The thing is, whatever opportunity comes our way, we can just peep into it. And if it is our requirement, we can explore it. See, uh, another thing I can tell you, uh, for example, uh, in Coursera, because we have signed with Coursera for the Coursera for campus, already told. They have given us 7,000 licenses free of cost. In Coursera, students can join until July 31st. And they can complete their courses until September. They have given that much time. You are not paying not even a single paisa or rupee to the Coursera. They are having some 3,800 plus courses. Topmost courses. Courses offered by the topmost professors across the world. Starting from machine learning, AI, AI, blockchain technology, and a lot of management courses, arts and science humanities courses. So initially, the people will be hesitant to join. But once they start joining, no, then they will be more towards that one. So the innovative mind, I think I'll come to the question again. Only thing is the curiosity, the passion. So uh, people are people may say, how is it possible to do so much of things for the students? It's my passion. I am not asking any recognition. Okay. When I do something good for the students, I feel satisfied. When the students 
and even in the case of coursera we have opened to the alumni also really good number of alumni also join the program and when they say sir thank you sir we have learned a lot it is an a thing when we get some kind of feedback from the students positive feedback from the students as an academician i felt very happy at least i am able to do something to the students so keeping our personal interest aside when we look into the larger framework so that large community will get benefited definitely we will not get tired and we can definitely we will innovate i think uh, this is my answer to this question yes madam yes sir yeah any more so i think the session was over i think was that thank you so much sir for your kind uh, for some good presentation for us and uh, we'll be getting for your feedback and everything we have to post to you sir thank okay, you so much sir thank you sir thank you for the okay thank you thank you everyone for your patience i think i hope you enjoyed the session thank you Yes, sir. Really, this was very so very useful, and we are getting for so much of uh, very good um, feedback, sir. So we'll be sending you there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the response.